the motherboard is probably the hardest thing to get right when building your gaming system. Do you really need a $500 motherboard in order to get great FPS? Is $200 too little? How many VRMs do you need? What are the phases? What about the software? What about the other features? PCI 4? What's a PCIe lane? There's so much to consider in this little tiny box. This is the Project 7 series where I go into long form detailed review of how to build your own gaming PC. If you are interested in gaming content like this, go ahead and click that like button, perhaps even the subscribe. Also, check out thegraintech.com for some behind the scenes photos and a little bit more detail on all of the parts that are going into Project 7. Now, I know there's a certain segment out there that just wants me to get straight to the point, and that's exactly what I'm going to do here first. Follow along after this if you would like to understand why the ASUS Tough Gaming Z590 Plus Wi-Fi is the ASUS motherboard that I recommend, and the MSI Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi is the other motherboard that I recommend. If you would like to understand why, go ahead and continue to watch. If this is all the information that you needed, how about clicking that thumbs up button, maybe subscribe so that when I talk about CPUs and GPUs, you'll be notified. All right, for those who stuck around, you probably heard me say the Z before the name of a number. It's a rather large number. What do these Z, B, and H's actually mean? Well, it's actually kind of simple. B stands for business. The B chipset series was designed by Intel for security and stability-minded IT administrators who didn't mind sacrificing a little bit of productivity in order to ensure security and reliability. H was developed for the home use. And I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about people that, well, they're going to check email, they're going to browse the internet, they're going to use office productivity tools, and that's about it. They might watch Netflix, but that's probably even pushing it. So that's what the H series traditionally was for. Z was the more performance minded, the enthusiast class, and the gaming class chipset. And then Intel came out with this H. 570, which they claim sits right behind the Z590. And as we're looking at these specs, a lot of the numbers are the same. Two of the numbers are extremely important and very much the same. And that is this idea of lanes. And this is as simple as the concept of a highway. So if you have a highway between two points, the number of lanes on that highway can help determine how much traffic flows. In an ideal world, every bit of traffic would be stacked up equal distance going the maximum speed that is allowable on the road and everybody will arrive in perfect uniformity and the entire set of lanes is fully utilized. If you can imagine such a perfect world, that's essentially what we're talking about here. So I want you to take note of this number, this 20 CPU. That means there are 20 direct lanes connected to the CPU for other chips to be able to communicate directly with the CPU. And you can see right here, the H570 has the same thing. So a lot of the times what you will hear as a recommendation is the Z series is if you got an overclocked processor, one that has the K on it. While the H570 is one that somebody who isn't going to overclock, that's the motherboard that they should get. So there's only really one problem with that, though. The Z series is the only one that has official XMP support. And XMP is what you need in order to get faster RAM, which means if you're trying to get the most gaming performance out of your system, you have to buy a Z class motherboard, regardless of if you have a K CPU or not. To me, that's problematic. Now, before I continue, I have to point this out. One, I will cover what XMP is in a future video. Two, some manufacturers and motherboards said, Intel, 
we hear you, but we're going to go ahead and enable XMP with our motherboards in order to support the full speed of these RAM kits. Those are unofficially supported by the motherboard manufacturers because Intel won't let them officially support it. And because of that, I'm not going to recommend any of those motherboards, at least at this time. Well, I'm happy to say that the Z490 and the Z590 are both compatible with the 10th and the 11th generation Intel Core processors, which means that we can pick and choose between these processors to determine which is going to meet our gaming needs. Now, there are some differences here. The biggest one here is the PCIe 4 support that was not available on 10th generation core processors. There is a new architectural core and the speed at which the RAM can go before it is considered overclocked is also higher. You do get a little bit more instruction sets and the new HDMI 2.0 standard, which is 2.0B. The last thing to note on here is we do have this thing called DMI, Direct Media Interface. What is that? Well, this is what your processor looks like kind of to start. And this is the most important bit of information for us. Because you see your CPU is going to connect directly to your PCIe 16 highway laned fourth generation GPU, like the 6000 series from AMD or the 3000 series from NVIDIA. It's going to be able to connect at four lanes to a fourth gen NVMe drive like the Sabint Rocket Plus and it's going to directly connect to your RAM with that XMP profile enabled. So from a gaming standpoint, we have everything we need. What is this, what is this other thing, this DMI? DMI is the connection between the processor and the other chip that is on your motherboard. And that other chip is going to connect to some pretty important stuff too. It's going to connect to your audio driver. It's going to connect to your network. It's going to connect to your Wi-Fi. It's going to connect to your SATA. It's going to connect to your USB. So you do have a lot of things communicating directly with that chipset. And then the chipset has to communicate information to the processor. The 400 series has 4X DMI. The 500 series has 8X DMI. When does this matter? This matters if you have a capture card that needs to communicate directly to the core processor. This matters if you have a lot of extra hard drives or a lot of USB devices connected that are going to use up a lot of bandwidth, again, that need to connect and talk to that core processor. If you're not in that scenario, which the majority of gamers are not going to be, you most likely will never see a difference here between 4X and 8X DMI. If you enjoy gaming performance content, consider clicking that like button, maybe even subscribing. If you're already a subscriber, please visit patreon.com slash thegrayingtech to learn how you can help me pay it forward. After you have identified the chipset, the next most important thing is the VRM, the voltage regulating modular voltage regulator module one of those two this article right here from make tech easier explains very effectively what a vrm does move down towards the bottom links for this will be down below but right here is the most critical thing to understand power is delivered to your power supply unit and power comes from that psu to your motherboard to your components it is delivered at 12 volts. Your CPU, though, doesn't run at 12 volts. It typically runs at 1.1 to 1.4 volts. The VRM helps provide proper voltage, proper current, proper electrical flow to your CPU. And it does that through this switching methodology. What this switch here is actually doing is it is providing the correct volts to your CPU and adjusting which of the VRM is active at a given time. This helps reduce the overall burden on a single component, reduces temperature, 
and increases efficiency. Effectively, this multi-phased approach gives you cleaner, stable, reliable, smoother power and thus allows you to get better overclocks and better stability out of your CPU. And then you need to pay attention to the actual numbers. So you're, you're seeing right here a great diagram. This is what most motherboards will look like. Capacitors, chokes, and mossets. All of these work in a certain way, but the number that you're interested in is typically displayed like this. 12 plus 1 plus 1. The first number is the number of phases for the CPU. We want the highest number we can possibly get. For the 10th generation Intel, 12 typically was the bottom number. For 11th generation, 14 is typically the bottom number. Bottom number simply meaning the majority of gamers who are really going to push the envelope with their motherboard and their CPU and their RAM, you really should have this kind of number. So if you're looking at 10th gen, try to go for 12. If you're looking for 11th gen, try to go for 14. Now, if you have an 11th generation CPU, 12 will work. And it is a cost-effective way to get good performance at a slightly reduced rate. Just know it's going to run a little bit hotter. And these are the kind of trade-offs that you're going to have to do and have to figure out. Now, there is a wealth of places that you can go in order to get information on the right motherboard and the right VRM solution to get. I really like this article here from overclock.net. They have a Google spreadsheet that lays out all of the great information, all the things that you need, including the reviews in various places down below that have the temperature, all kinds of good information. And this right here is where I pulled from my recommendation. If you are looking for a Z590 motherboard, this Asus right here is spot on with its capabilities. It has the appropriate V core, that's the first number, and it has the appropriate VCC GT for an 11th gen processor. Specifically, I'm talking about this right here. This is telling me that it exceeds what Intel says is necessary to really get good overclocks from a K processor, which is currently 55 amps. You can see here that this motherboard has 100 amps. If we compare that to the Z490 motherboard that I recommend, which is this MPG from MSI, that has 60 amps. So in both of these cases, we have adequate amperage to be able to support good overclocks and sustained performance. Just know the Z490 is going to run a little bit hotter because it does not have as many VRMs as the Z590 that I recommended. And this is the price trade-off that you're going to have to make. So let me show you what this looks like over in PC Part Picker. System Builder, choose a motherboard. I want you to go ahead and ignore everything on the right hand side for now. We're going to scroll down, click show more, ASUS, EVGA, MSI. Those are the brands that I have used and those are the brands that I would recommend. We'll go for five and four star. The current chipset or socket type is LGA1200. So that's the one you're going to select there. Form factor is ATX. Now there's there's a lot of different form factors that are out there. If you have a mid-sized tower like the Fantex that I recommended, go for an ATX motherboard that's typically going to give you the best price to performance ratio that is going to be out there. Maybe in a future video I'll dive into a little bit more of these different form factors, but for now let's keep it simple and just choose ATX. The chipsets we're looking at are the Z490 and the Z590. down towards the bottom, we're going to select Wi-Fi 6. You do want Wi-Fi 6. I'll go over why later in a future video, but that is going to give you the ability to really set up a good network and be able to, to optimize where traffic is flowing throughout your network. 
we sort by price, you can see we have 15 compatible products. They go all the way up to $650. You do not need a motherboard that expensive. The ones that I recommend are right here at $199.95 or this Tough Gaming at $259.99. Now the last consideration that most people will have when it comes to picking out a motherboard is the software package. As a gaming performance software product manager for six years, it pains me to admit it doesn't really matter. Both of these brands have competent software teams. Both of these brands have very similar feature sets when it comes to the software that they provide. But if you want a quick breakdown, MSI provides fantastic overclocking tools. The majority of these right down to the BIOS and give you a lot more control over the nuances that comes for gaming performance. However, ASUS provides a little bit more in terms of one-click utility and a wider swath of compatible partners when it comes to Aurora Sync, their RGB solution. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because we're gonna use different tools to get the most gaming performance out of our system. So let's summarize all of this. The two boards that I recommend are the MSI MPG Z490 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi motherboard, as you see here, and the ASUS TUF Z590 Plus Wi-Fi motherboard, as I've mentioned before. Why I recommend these is they fit the perfect price and performance ratios that you need for great gaming performance. The differences between the Z490 and the Z590 are not significant enough for you to really jump towards the Z590. If you want slightly cooler VRMs, if you can find a great price, or if you happen to really like ASUS, that's a great motherboard and it provides an excellent number of features. If you want to save about $60 or you prefer MSI, this motherboard right here is absolutely the way to go. Just note, the VRM solution will run slightly hotter. You have to get a Z-Class motherboard if you want to do XMP overclocking with official support, which is what we are going to do. We are going for very fast RAM, very tight timings because it will improve your gaming performance. And the Z-Class motherboards are the only ones Intel officially supports XMP with. You want to make sure that if you have a 10th generation processor, you have at least 12 VRMs dedicated to providing power to that CPU. If you move into the 11th series, you want to try to have 14 VRMs. If you still run 12, just note that they will run a little bit hotter and that could affect some stability, but that's exactly what I'm going to try to do with this motherboard itself. When it comes to software, it's a wash. If you want better RGB support, ASUS, if you want better overall tools that can give you control in Windows, go with MSI. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day though. With that, the next video, I'm gonna open the box. I'm gonna show you how to install a motherboard inside of Project 7. And we're really starting to build a computer at this point.